What's up, world? Welcome to another edition of I Mix What I Like right here at I Mix What I Like. Again, I'm Jared Ball. Very happy to be your host. I got sent this video interview featuring Dr. Umar Johnson. I watched the whole thing. And as a result, I feel like you can at least suffer with me through a couple of clips that I think are emblematic of the broader discussion. So let's check it out. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. There's three short clips that I think, again, are emblematic of the entire discussion, the link to which is in the show description. You can check it out and assess, and you can complete the assessment of my assessment and determine how well I, I represented what was said here. Uh, it gets pretty heated. It gets, it gets performative. But I think, again, these three clips summarize not only a lot of the issues I have with this particular discussion, and it is just one discussion. This is not an assessment of Dr. Umar's entire body of work. It's also not to mean that I want to be lumped in with all those who have created a cottage industry of, of critiquing Dr. Umar Johnson without themselves having any particular interest in radical or revolutionary uh, change. But that said, I do think there are a number of issues with this, this with this discussion that represent some broader problems that that we uh, are all facing here. So, let's check it out. The next question from Michael G. Brother Umar, you have eloquently articulated the generational problems. Do you have any active and effective solutions in place or pending that could have generational impact? Well, number one, education. The schools, obviously, uh, from a psychological perspective, until we have a psychological revolution, we won't have any other kind. Until you change the way black people think, you change nothing about us. Our problems, we have the money. We got all the educated people. You understand? We got the intelligence. We got the number. We got what we need. Mm -hmm. The only resource we're missing is the psychological resource. Black people are not committed. Black people don't believe in themselves. White power has convinced us we can't beat it. Mm -hmm. You see that? White power has convinced us we can't beat it. And this is a big reason why, this is a big reason why a lot of black men are dating white women. All right, so even in that one short clip, I think we get a lot that sets the table for some of the issues I have. One, of course, is which that, and I and I probably should have hit it then. Message! That he sets the tone for the rest of the argument and the rest of the approach that we see throughout this interview and that we see a lot of places that we already have what we need. We just need the psychological reorientation to put it to use. We already have the buying power. We already have the access to capital. We already have the access to business development. We just don't have the financial literacy is, is another way of how I hear that. Uh, it doesn't account for a lot of different things that would go into it. Just a few off the top, which would be in what setting is this, hostility against African people going to recede while schools are developed by those African people that teach their children how to become revolutionaries. Similarly, not that I want to evoke the dreaded materialists, but what if the psychology and the culture of a community is based in the material conditions of that community? In other words, how do you redirect the psychology of a community without the material surrounding surrounding supporting that psychological development in other in in other other words to what extent can schools or a, a school protect against that hostility while producing revolutionaries against that hostility without and in what ways will that educational process be protected militarily public policy wise or any other way. So it just sounds, uh, you know, I'm often accused of the same, but these solutions sound pretty vague to me. That sounds pretty vague. And then even the way he hesitates and has that look as he moves on to, this is why we see black men with white women. It just seems as a, in a nice, easy way to avoid the more complicated issues involved with struggle and to get to, to, again, the kind of low-hanging political fruit of that's why black men end up with white women. But we're talking about a situation where I still believe it's like 87% of black men end up with black women. 
So to what extent is this interracial dating really the the cause or really what is holding us back? It seems an odd thing for him to turn to focus to, which he does, uh, before moving on to to other areas that are, I think, equally vaguely addressed and approached. But again, we have what we need. We just need to get that mindset together and then we can set up the banks and the business and the schools and all the other things and seemingly avoid any sort of conflict, any sort of radical movement building, any sort of, and the state and the apparatus of whiteness is, and, and, and coloniality is just going to collapse. All right, let's just move on. Yeah. What, what, so You're missing what I'm saying. If some, if hip hop, when hip hop comes, hip hop is an entire culture, okay. our fashion, the way we walk, the way How we talk. How is that a benefit to black America? Because so, now people who didn't have access to jobs in the fashion Black people specifically who didn't have access to jobs before the explosion of hip hop fifty so years these ago. White companies that make billions of dollars. Forget the white companies. I'm talking about black the, owned the, companies like that have come. Who? How many? Fubu, Fubu, Fubu Carcanai. Carcanai. I'm getting out of here. What? what the fuck? <laughs> Where Fubu Carcanai? You said it. Fit. On, you're, moving, you're moving. You're moving the goal. You're, you're moving the goalpost. You, you're moving the goalpost. On, you said in fifty years. Oh, come on. You man. said in 50 years. You reaching, bro. You reaching. That's not true, though. People I'm, that is a reach. What? You said in 50 years. In 50 years. <laughs> All right. So as you see, the, the conversation moves into and, and dovetails in and out of hip hop, business, et cetera, and so forth. But again, similar to what I think about the first clip and the issue of education, here Umar goes into a lot of rappers are the problem, hip hop didn't and he's right that hip-hop has not been the change that many have been encouraged to believe it is he's absolutely right but it's not because uh of what rappers did or didn't do or continue to do and so much of the focus and the heated exchange that evolves between uh umar and his hosts is around the complicity of rappers promoting anti-blackness and anti-africanness and again he's right except for understanding why it would be that these impoverished, colonized, mostly young teenagers, certainly initially, or young adults, are themselves the problem as opposed to, again, the colonial relationship, the, the, uh, and it, the, the, without recognizing or investigating the role that corporations play, the, the, the relationship of cultural expression within a colony that would produce not only hip hop initially, but the form it would be forced to assume and the role it would be forced to play. But again, I think similar to the other, his other response, this just becomes a platform and a segue and a launching pad for other low hanging fruit, as we're going to see in the next clip of Jews, Asians, the white man, we don't have control of our businesses, which again does not completely avoid or ignore real or accurate history. It just strips it of its context, strips it of any of its potential to teach and inform people what our actual relationship is to society and how society is constructed and how these institutions work. It just becomes more of the regurgitating, it becomes more regurgitation of the same simple, trite arguments that are effective in attracting a lay audience and attracting a following, but don't really lead to the levels of critical thinking and certainly political organization that would be required to actually address any of this. We Listen, the, Jews, the Jews can sell the product. The Jews can oh own God. the money that goes out for advances. They can't own hip hop. Go to law school. You, you will be a great attorney. In, in who don't? Black people don't make black they tell you what to do is, and how to who, get there. Who is telling you what to wear? Who, who, who is all telling the major you hip -hop what stations, to stations, white people? Who own all the record labels, white people? Who? We are in who, America, which is owned by majority white people. We are. Oh, we are. You should say that. We are statistically only represented by thirteen percent. Because you do know there's Asians in America, and their number is lower than yours, and they own their own shit. Right. So don't give me the fact but that they also weren't brought over here and, and changed. It don't matter, no, bro. It do, 
We are two trillion dollar people. There's Why no way, there, Doctor Uma. Why hasn't Dr. Biden Umar, done more independent? There's no way you can continue to keep moving the goalposts like this. There's Nobody's no way we can. The there's no way we can. Keep, about? There's no way we can You're keep talking about. The there's no way we can keep talking about PTSD. The way. You and again, uh, please check the entire hour plus interview for more. And obviously, Umar has much more content uh, online. But I just happened to be sent this video, and just found it to be so filled with problems, including in that last clip there. Again, the cliched return to Jews and Asians. Asians own everything in their own community. Jews own everything in the broader society, particularly that impacts Black people. But again, unlike what we've tried to do around here, there's no real exploration at, at, into the actual histories and contexts that put people in certain places. There's no actual investigation in these kinds of discussions of, in other words, how did Jews end up in certain areas of the, the, the political economy and this society? How do Asians end up in certain uh, positions vis-a-vis -vis their community formations here in the United States, their at least nominal control over their communities and business. Where is all of that? Again, there's no discussion of policy, history, the backing of the government here in the United States, historically the Chinese, well, historically internet today, the Chinese government. In other words, a lot of these communities have a state formation backing them uh, and supporting them both in terms of the United States and their home countries that the, that the, that black people don't have here. They've had policy benefiting them and the ability for them to access capital and, and develop uh, businesses in their community. And then ultimately, there has been a cap and a limit to that. This idea that Asians are living in some uh, well-filled utopia without looking again, as, as we've done a number of times on, the, uh, on this show and elsewhere and related shows and on Black Liberation Media, how do these folks actually live? How much wealth do they actually create? To what extent is that benefiting how many people in their community? None of these questions are explored or answered in these kinds of presentations. And this is often the level at which they're left in terms of uh, the depth of, of, uh, of exploration and explanation. And then for Dr. Umar to say to the brother, it doesn't, it don't matter, bro, in terms of the difference historically between the development of African communities here in the United States or a black nation here in the United States and various Asian populations because he's saying we're a $2 trillion people, which is factually incorrect, both in terms of what, again, buying power is supposed to mean, the, again, again relative incomes and specifically wealth, it's it's incorrect and then it in and then the the it is also misrepresentative of what power is associated with what levels of accessible wealth or even income black people would have so it's just in it's just incorrect the performance is engaging the walking off he later walks off and starts to walk out before coming back and and it's it's the the performance of it is engaging i get it but it's not helpful it doesn't lead to anything and then finally this is really where i want, would want to wrap with this is that in this video he has a lot of again vague solutions that are a result of an analysis that is that is ultimately measuring white women in the, in relationships with black men hip hop and rapper led movements jews who own everything and asians who own their own stuff there's not even a suggestion of data. There's not even a suggestion of research. There's not even a suggestion of evidence. And more importantly, as I was just saying, no exploration of context, detail. In fact, the brother tries to get to that detail and bringing up the differences between the Asian and, and, and African experience here. And Umar cuts it off to say it don't matter, bro. So again, outside of performance, the walking off, the bluster, there's very little substance. And then the conclusion for me, because Umar offers no solutions other than promoting his school, which I think, as I've already said, is an insufficient argument or an insufficient call for a response to the problems that we're facing here. It's, it's, it uncomplicates the nature of the problem to a point of it not offering anything of value in terms of an analysis or an interpretation. But what really stands out to me, and I want to ask anyone, of any, particularly those who want to send me these videos, 
Where are the videos of Umar on panels or debates or interviews with his actual peers, as opposed to all of these singular lectures or, or worse, the bullying of lay people and podcasters? Send me those videos, please. Again, as I've shared before, my handfuls of experiences with, with Dr. Johnson in person suggest he doesn't engage his peers. He engages students, audience members, fans, but he does have peers. He does have African-centered psychologists and psychiatrists. He has African-centered and, and just broadly speaking, Black radical educators, activists, scholars. Where are the videos showing us his engagement with them, his debates with them, where, again, he can't just bully and tough talk and perform and, and remonstrate his way out of any meaningful conversation. That I would like to see. I'm not inviting it here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> offering up myself, although I was willing, again, at that one point, drove to Philly, was, was willing to do it. He was unable to make it at the last minute, but it's not about, I'm not, it's, it's less, I'm actually less interested in doing, I'm more interested in seeing it done, uh, to see a fruitful, meaningful conversation between um, Dr. Umar and his, and his peers, not in some singular one-off interview where he's given room to run and just roam intellectually, but, uh, or even literally, but but where there's actual exchange that can be uh, more meaningful and substantive. So, all right, let's keep the conversation going. Like, share, subscribe, drop a comment. You can also now super chat, super thanks, and you can also become a member of this channel and Patreon. All links in the show description. So thank you very much. And as always, peace, only if you're willing to fight for it, as Fred Hampton used to say. And I'll catch you next time right here at I Mix What I Like, What I Like, What I Like, What I Like, What I Like.